Divorce settlements are often messy, but the breakup between real estate mogul Harry Macklow and his ex-wife Linda is one for the record books. Their art collection, which includes dozens of 20th and 21st century masterpieces, is the most valuable to ever go under the hammer, Moby Nasser reports. For a new world record for Mark Rothko, Patty Wong at $77,500,000. It was the first time in more than a year that art collectors were allowed inside the auction house Sotheby's in New York. And they've celebrated the end of COVID-19 restrictions by spending big. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen, for being here with us this evening, in person or remotely, for what has been, without question, a landmark eve. The collection on sale belonged to real estate tycoon Harry Macklow and his wife Linda. They divorced in 2016, but continued sparring over who would keep the artworks. In 2018, a court ordered the pieces to be auctioned off, with the proceeds split evenly between the former husband and wife. On Monday, more than half of the collection's 65 masterpieces by the likes of Pablo Picasso, Mark Rothko and Andy Warhol went under the hammer. Prior to the auction, the entire collection was valued at $600 million. But the 35 artworks that were sold far exceeded that amount all on their own. They brought in $676 million. That's the most valuable collection in Sotheby's history. It's put the auction house on track to rake in record sales in excess of $1 billion in the final quarter of the year. The company says the pandemic has boosted demand for art. Throughout the pandemic, um, there was great demand from our buyers who weren't um, experiencing the same level of supply as they were accustomed to. Um, and this will be the first really big sale season since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and we expect this return to pre-pandemic levels of supply to be met with an eager market audience. The remaining 30 pieces from the Macklow collection are scheduled to go under the hammer at Sotheby's in New York in May. And others like Christie's and Phillips are also hoping to cash in as collectors return to the auction floor. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. For more on this, TRT World's senior business producer Moby Nasser joins me. Moby, the sale far surpassed for Sotheby's $400 million estimate. How were expectations so far off the actual value of the right. auction? Right. It's been a messy divorce for the Maclos, but what a pleasant surprise to get more money for half their collection than they were expecting for the entire collection. Look, there's a few different things going on here. First of all, what the pandemic has done is it's severely limited supply of new artworks. Uh, coming to auction houses, coming to the secondary market. So really, buyers have been starved uh, for, uh, you know, these artworks. And that's certainly one reason why there was such high interest in the, this auction. Secondly, many of, the, many of the artworks in this collection were really the only ones to be left on the secondary market. Take, for example, uh, the one called A Scattering of Blossoms by Sai Twombly. Now, this was part of six pieces, all of which sold uh, immediately uh, after production. And so essentially, this was the only one on the marketplace for, for anybody wanting to get any of the works by that particular artist. So a confluence of factors really leading to uh, such high valuations for each of these pieces. Moby, many art sales have been delayed because of the coronavirus pandemic. Is this auction then a sign that the, the art market is roaring back to life? It certainly is. In fact, if we look at the numbers from over just the past two weeks, uh, collectively the three big auction houses, so Sotheby's, Christie's and Phillips, have now sold artworks worth around almost $2 billion. And um, of course, that, that's a huge number. It's, it's far out, uh, outstrips any sort of sales that they had during the pandemic. So clearly, the market is coming back to life. How difficult, really, is it to value artworks? I mean, differently than when real estate or other more liquid assets, uh, you only have one in the world often, and it, which actually doesn't uh, change hand for a very long time. Case in point, the, being this particular auction itself, uh, about look at look at the huge difference in in what professional value valuation had set as a base price. But valuation in this market ultimately can only determine a base price, so to speak. Uh, beyond that, really, it's just a matter of 
of taste, right? And how, how do you put a value on that? What's interesting is that there's uh, many new things that are being introduced into these, uh, into these circles or into these markets, if you will. If you recall last year, uh, there was the auction of a, of a T-Rex skeleton that sold for $28 million. Now, is that art? Arguable. But when, uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to art and taste, of course, valuation is very difficult. And what's, what it's really benefited right now in the, in the current times is new artists um, listening to the sort of uh, appraisals coming out of these auction houses, it seems. It's the new artists who've never been featured in art galleries before, who haven't had many large exhibitions, international uh, exhibitions, are also uh, being valued much higher than they were previously. Mobin Nasser, thank you very much for being with us today.